Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And you're listening to The Drop, our weekly podcast about running and nonsense and, of course, tangents. And this week, I think we're going to hear about some crabs. We're going to hear about Nashville. The good and, kind. And uh, even, even running the oval. <laughs> the Wait, oval. The, what's the good kind? The good kind of crabs? Yeah, they come with Old Bay. I think we all know the bad kind. Yeah, I mean, the good, the bad kind could come with Old Bay too. But that's a whole different thing. <laughs> I don't know. Do people still get crabs? I haven't heard anybody <laughs> been like, "I got crabs." Yeah, that, I feel like maybe that was a cool, like not cool, but like a a, a burn on people back in the nineties. That was a good. Yeah, that was a good one. But like, I, I do you know anybody personally who ever got crabs? I do from like grade <laughs> school. Like, yeah, I think that was uh, kind of a trend. <laughs> Wait, in grade school? I think they got it like, well, maybe it wasn't great. Maybe it was, call the police. It, it might have been boarding school. There may have been a breakout. Okay. Uh, but that, I don't think it was. Did you go to a boys' We're not talking school? about lice or it was, either, It was right? co-ed, but I don't think it was sexually transmitted. I think it was just like it, like oh, bed just, bugs almost. Just dirty I don't people? think that's how that works. Okay. Can, can well, you, uh, let's not, just, I will tell you this. I'm I not didn't, Googling. I did can not get, get crabs in high school. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm not putting that. I'm not Googling that. Um, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe I didn't, I've never gotten crabs, but I definitely didn't get them in high school. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, that was a thing. I haven't heard about it for a while now. So, but I did get crabs this weekend in the good, <laughs> in a good sense of the term. Yeah, we were, um, that's actually the first time I went crabbing. Like, did you go buy chicken necks? Yeah, a, a lot of chicken necks. It was a whole thing. I, why chicken necks? I think it's because it's the, cheap. it's cheap. The meat is sinewy and tough so it doesn't break down as mm -hmm. fast you can just leave it out there forever um but i got it at talk to down the street oh this is local that you did this well i got the chicken x there yeah um the, at the taco shop right here yeah and then um but then i brought it back and put it in our freezer i was like i'm not gonna forget this and i didn't and then i forgot it in my freezer at home <laughs> so okay quick question uh so it sounds about right yeah. can people eat chicken necks I'm sure you can. I think it's like one of those things you might have to chew on for maybe no, no, no. four hours. No, no, no. Uh, I think they like you use them for like specifically? cooking. Oh, okay. Like in soups or something maybe, but you're not eating them. I, I mean, I think you can eat anything, but it just is a matter of how long it would take. I don't think you can eat anything. I think it's like an everlasting gobstopper, but for nature. <laughs> chew on that neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we go too far down the uh, crab and lane, because I'm sure we're going to return to it at, at a certain point. Uh, this week was crazy. Um, again, like I feel like when we have traveling and then other projects, like we're doubling up on stuff, it's a lot. And we had Brandon in town, which was awesome. And uh, yeah, because I don't know if you know this, Brandon's kind of doing a hybrid thing at the moment where yeah. he's in South Dakota. And then Sioux Falls. Yeah. He's one of the three people that moved to South Dakota this past on purpose. Year. Yeah, like yeah. by choice. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually. They might start doing um, articles about in-depth articles about him. Yeah, for being one of the few migratory East Coast persons who have especially gone to South Dakota. who hasn't had a lobotomy. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> we don't know that for sure. We don't. Maybe something happened that we're not sure. Yeah, his his girlfriend did go to Hopkins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he could be a test subject. He could be. He doesn't know yeah. it. He's getting dosed, microdosed every day. <laughs> yeah, that explains. Come it. to South Dakota. That explains um, it. Anyway. He was in town, so we did sorry, shot a bunch of video. Sorry to South Dakota listeners. There's got to be a couple probably. There's, like, there's Brandon now. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyways, continue. Uh, yeah. So uh, we shot a bunch of videos, so we're going to have some reviews coming out for you that are pretty gnarly. We went and shot some awesome footage at the Under Armour event. Meg, you were in Nashville. Yeah. On the hydration tour. Stop and number five. Number five. In heat comparison to the other cities you've been to, how did Nashville look? It was the hottest. It oh, was? Yeah. Oh, because you were there on Saturday, right? Yeah. That was the hottest it day It was actually the hottest summer. day of their summer as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Did you plan it? Yeah, we did. It's about time it got hot on one of these hydration tour stops. Dude, it's been real hot. <laughs> they were all hot except for Oklahoma City, I mean, which like, felt lovely. Like real hot. No, Austin yeah. was pretty narrowly. Like, it was in the 90s, right? It was like eighties. Oh, okay, that is pretty hot in the morning. Sorry, with the hot, with the. I have a short term memory, so I think the last one wasn't that hot, right? Yeah, Oklahoma City. Yeah, the, the last one wasn't that bad. Speaking of weather, did you feel it this morning? Oh man, it felt like fall. Uh, oh, it was so gorgeous. Yeah, I was like, I felt like I actually could run again. Mm -hmm. I was like, like oh, you could I'm, breathe. I was actually having some 
thoughts in my head like maybe my running life is over after the last three runs and then i was like oh i'm actually it's actually okay i like think that happens summer. every summer <laughs> yeah you're like i can't go faster yeah but yeah so tell us a little bit about nashville because it sounded pretty cool yeah um before i dive into nashville is there anything you want to say about the grit party because we recorded before that happened Wait, we did oh wow we haven't talked about it no we did <laughs> we did that we last covered week. it last week that was a summer grit party recap last week yeah what? it was two weeks ago maybe you don't what did we record last week <laughs> the summer grit party recap. yeah that but was the what happened between then uh, and now between that then. you your brain got fried because yeah. you traveled all Dude, the way i don't know what <laughs> you went from the summer grit party <laughs> i thought we talked about it before no no, oh. it was last we week. We did talk about it before. I only know this. I, I would be with you on this, except I know because I wrote the title for the podcast last week as Summer Grip Party Recap. No, you're right. It's because I just finished editing our Fuel for the Soul podcast, which oh. we do two weeks in advance. I got you. And that one we talked about. I would have right? thought the same oh, thing. Oh, we didn't talk about it. It's we, only we didn't. That's okay. why I was like, we got to recap. There's that. a lot of stuff. There's a lot of balls in the air right now. Moving A lot of moving pieces. Yeah, so no, I don't want to talk about the ball. <laughs> Let's definitely I don't want to talk about that. about that. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Thanks all for coming. <laughs> yeah. But Grit did finish. Yeah. So that. I guess oh, can you give me the that. top? Yeah, let me pull it up here. So um, Grit has evolved. Each time it's gotten a little crazier. It's a little. And this dir- one. Disturbing in a way. It blew my mind. Now, I got to say something, though. And I still feel like the fundamental part of what Grit is and challenging yourself to do a little more or be a little better than you have been, maybe consistent and running, especially in the summer. And. I saw people that were ecstatic about hitting 100 miles for the for the month. I saw people ecstatic for hitting, you know, just new records for themselves. And then there was people that just go nuts and get all of it. But I'm, like, impressed by everybody. Because if you're not doing that many miles and you sign up for this uh, for Summer Grit and you just do 10 more than you normally would do a month or 20, but some people are doing, like, doubling what they've done in the past. And you get jaded because you see these big numbers being thrown down. But I, I feel like it, we should be like giving a, a round of applause to everybody. Even For the, sure. Even the people who are, you know, dropping out those numbers yeah. that aren't aren't insane. So as far as the top uh, mileage getter, so the first place was this dude, Kanato Goto from Princeton, New Jersey. I, I don't even know. He ran 878 miles. Can you divide that by 31? Well, I mean, 900 divided by 30 is 30 miles. So it's yeah, just he, he, under that, yeah. whatever, 29. So, and then Patrick Blair, was <sighs> aver- was he averaging a marathon a day? Yeah, so Pat Blair from, you know, friend of ours from out, right outside Baltimore, he... Baltimore? Yeah, he did 817 miles. So he averaged, I think, like 27 miles a day. And he didn't even run the last day. He was fine. He just like, I got my, to my goal... That's what I wanted to do. Average 26.2 over the month. And then he just stopped, which that's kind of cool. It is. You know, I was thinking about, we asked, I asked you last time that, would you rather have, I mean, do you think summer grit or winter grit's tougher? And I think they're tougher. They're each tough for different reasons. Yeah. I mean, I think summer, but. I mean, summer's tough, but winter, you got to get up. It's dark. You got to put on layers. Your laundry is out the door. Like. You can't keep up with your laundry at that point. Well, you can because yeah. you'll you'll wear the same. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> merino. Wait, I was like, wait, summer's worse because I was literally gonna say summer's worse because of the laundry. Because <laughs> <laughs> you actually have to wash. Yeah, because it's like yeah. that's legitimately gross. Yeah, I have to. Okay, I won't get it. Shout out that. to his <laughs> tracksmith. Uh, what is it? The uh, ba- Brighton base layer. Yeah, that gets him through the entire month of grit. Yeah, pretty much unwashed. <laughs> That should be a new challenge. Can you wear the same thing every day for a month and run, you know, mega miles? Is that a challenge or is that just life? I'm going to give that as a challenge. You'll see if you can do it. So, uh, and then third place was Michael Mbagu from Baltimore. He ran 565. So there's quite a gap between the top two and the third place. A 300 miles? That's huge. Yeah, like 250. (laughs) That's like how much one person will run. Yeah. And then rounding at the top five was Jason Karpinski. He's from Pennsylvania. And then... Uh, top female, Alexandra Austin. She ran 509 miles, uh, and she's from Baltimore. Baltimore. Wow, man, Baltimore. the East Coast is really rapping. Do you know who she is? I don't actually Say know. Say it again. Alexandra Austin. Do you know who she is? Some badass runners at yeah. 500 miles. How do we not know who that yeah, person is? It sounds like an author, though. 
Like Jane oh, Austen yeah. or something? Alexandra. It's actually a better name than Jane Austen. Yeah. So. D- Congrats on your name. Wait, am I correct that Jane Austen is an uh, author? Uh, yes. All right, cool. Yeah, she wrote like. <laughs> Don't read, no authors. <laughs> Pride, and Pr- Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility. She likes. T- it's what kind of you, a big deal. What about The Secret Garden? Um, is that her? No, that's a. Uh, I always forget the author. Yeah, that's like a lesser known Francis Hodgson's Hodgson Burnett mm. Secret Garden. Um, but I always sometimes I get um, Jane Austen mixed up with some someone else. But anyways, we can st- just keep moving on from what that. What about uh, yeah Austin, <laughs> Texas? I was thinking Austin Hayes Orioles outfielder saved the game last night. But we're not talking about baseball. We're not talking about books. We're talking about life. And running. And running. So, Meg, let's go back to Nashville here. Because <laughs> wasn't I, that where we were starting? Yeah, we were. And then I forgot what oh, wait, year it I was. I guess we got to say congrats to all the people who took part in Grit. Yeah. Get excited. We will be having a winter Grit. So if you dug this and we're into it, yeah. get ready wait. to it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm, I am I'm can't think now. Well, I wanted to say that, because uh, what I wanted to say is that the first place guy, we we, we had to, we we had to address, it. like, he run. He apparently he runs that mileage like every month. Yeah. It's not a grit thing. He just does a marathon a day all the time, and he's it's legit. Yeah, We've, but also, what's his job? He's like a brain surgeon or something. No, he's a like a theoretical physicist who's. I think he teaches at Princeton and dabbles in string theory and quantum. So physics. that's my question. Like, you're for eight hundred something miles. Even if you do do it fast, and he does do a uh, fast faster mile, faster pace miles. Yeah. When I say faster pace, he's in like the sevens for a lot of these, right? I think that's his his moving time slower, um, okay. but his yeah he he won the Princeton half marathon last fall, so he's fast. Yeah, like he's legit but what I'm fast. trying to say is I'm trying to equate time. Yeah, not so much pace. I mean, he's probably one of those people like our friend who they only need like three to four hours of sleep and then they're like they're good to go. Uh, but I do. Can you imagine though, running that many miles and sleeping three hours? Yeah, that's all you need. But he's he's working. I think he actually is working on time travel within his job. So I'm wondering, it, do you think that there's a possibility that, that he's he, cheating the system, like going? Yeah, like he could be time traveling just Wait, a little bit. What maybe? do you mean he's working on time travel? The the, the string description, theory and I look, all that stuff, right? Yeah, I looked up his thing, and I, I think he actually is. From what I could gather, it seems that theoretical time travel, mm-hmm. the philosophy. Yeah. So I. His name, his last name is Go To. I mean, that's a two verb. You know, that's yeah. going to something. So maybe that's a thing too. Where do you think that they're just born in his? Do name. you think that uh, time travel is possible theoretically? Yeah, I'm not sure. I do. <laughs> okay. I here's my thing. <laughs> I do feel like even though time is an abstract concept, it's immutable as far as you can. Whether you believe in time, like clock time. You can watch something decay. You can watch a life go from start to finish. Mm-hmm. You can see the effects of progression. Mm-hmm. So the only thing is I read this thing called Einstein's Dreams, mm-hmm. and it had all these different versions of relativity and how like you actually are time traveling if you think about when you look at a clock from a mile away, like say there's a clock tower. Yeah. By the time the light hits it and hits your eyes... As you get closer to the clock, the time speeds up. As you get further away from it, it slows down based on that clock. Right. So he did the, in the Einstein series, they did a whole universe that was based on how okay. close you were to the clock tower Yeah. in the village, determined how fast and slow oh. time was traveling for you. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, and in, in, in his description of his, his job, he says, let me make, tell me how much of this you understand. I'm a theoretical physicist studying string theory, and my main interests lie in foundational questions about quantum gravity, black hole physics, and supersymmetric quantum field theories. I'm currently trying to understand the basic mechanism and the mysteries of the holographic principle, which states that information about gravity and the space-time contained in our three-dimensional universe can be completely described by the two-dimensional boundary surrounding it, just like a hologram emerges from a sheet of photographic film. Tell me this guy isn't moving through space. I mean, you that might be that, right. You that would be, be right. a question, though. Like, also, if you got further away from the sun, would time, the you experience time differently? You well, know yeah, how? Yeah, it's your... Because like, we think of gravity. Gravity is an absolute. Mm-hmm. But, like, when you're out in space, there's no gravity. And thinking about, like, spinning around the sun, we measure the year 
yeah by the rotation the further out you are could you slow down aging being further from I, the sun? I mean i think that i think you can you mean if you're closer to the sun a further away i think it would speed up if you got closer i think it's i think it's the opposite I forget. Anyway, I, I love when we talk about this and people like, yeah, everybody's going to be like, people. you idiots. Yeah. Um, I don't mind. <laughs> believe it or not, I, I love reading about this stuff. And then it just, I read it and I'm like, that's interesting. And then the information goes out the window. So I don't know what I'm talking about. So wait, what would you do if you found out he's a flat earther in this hologram thing? The two dimensional hologram I mean, I have creating to, a three dimensional. I have to believe him over me. So I'm, I'm cool with it. I mean, but if you even just think about that statement, a flat, surfaces creates a hologram so we are in a paper thin universe two-dimensional universe yeah but we live in a 3d version of oh it. we're like in a pop-up book basically that's a hologram you can see a three-dimensional object within a two, two-dimensional yeah. space wait now after learning all this about the guy you believe his strava is accurate he could be just winging it out there like making some stuff up oh yeah i mean the people say you might not be running it off you know, some people uh he's running through our brain someone commented on the facebook group that they they know him in the area like he's a legend where they're from so. he is or his hologram exactly is. yeah i mean he could be in two, That's true. two spots at one time we don't even know that right he's probably cloned himself man all right well all right. well congrats maybe, for killing the miles and being a super brainiac yeah kanato Cannot tell. Cannot tell believe that. Yeah. But I will. All right. This is Thomas with your first check in. And I got a special guest th this week. Say hello, special guest. Hello. It's Megan. <laughs> and you should be excited because anybody knows anything about running, it's, it's Megan pretty much. You study it. You're like a big studier of the sport. Something like that. You read all stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is one of your favorite things from one of the books that you've read that would be a tip for our people today? Thomas. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. I don't, like, you did can't... you just mean to give me the finger or did that naturally <laughs> pop up? That naturally occurred. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so you can see, first tip of the day, don't put Megan on the spot. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your run. We'll check in in a minute. So we're moving on from grit. What's going on? What's going on with the running and life and stuff? Well, I think we got to cover the hy hydration tour. Just to give a shout out to Nashville. Oh, yeah. Please yeah. And all Sorry. That stuff. We went to Brent, Brentville. Mm -hmm. Brent Wood. Uh, Brent, sorry, Brent Wood. Yeah, and apparently it's just like uh, the woodlands. It's very bougie, like a planned community. I ran through this neighborhood on my last day there that, like, three car garages were a minimum, oh, and then snap. there was like the Ferraris and stuff outside in the driveway. Oh man, that's where all the country. It's are. just like running through started. Baltimore. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it was wild. That's what I said, Robbie. It's got to be all the music people. I mean, it's definitely for sure a lot of them. It was the but, largest houses I've ever seen. But a lot of them live in Franklin, too, I think, which I've been to Franklin before. I don't know if I've been to Brentwood. So the the run turnout was incredible. Yeah, you were so a little... we, we, were, we ran out of fleet feet in Brentwood, um, which the store is huge. Like, this is similar to Oklahoma City where Red Coyote was. Like, we don't have these giant stores like they do Is here. it, like, as big as a Dick's? Yeah, like, they're huge. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> they're very large running stores like and they carry tracksmith they have viore they have like all kinds of brands that you just like we don't have in our local running stores so it's very cool to see those um i wonder why they are able to sustain such a you know a wide variety of product where i feel like you're pretty narrow here in in baltimore yeah i'm not sure do they they carry like all kinds of brands and yeah stuff? Oh. Like in like I always go look at the shoes and all the stores, you know, and they have like a lot of the shoes that we talk about where I feel like if you walked into a store here, it's like you, there's Brooks and Asics. Probably not yeah. Skechers performance, though. Unfortunately. Dude, speaking of Skechers, you see their new spokesperson? I think you hit a certain age and you retire into Skechers. Is it, it's, that's not Tony Romo? No. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh, Nice. He's taking off. He's taking off the con. He, yeah, he's taking off the converse. I love it. And dude, he's doing raps about it. He's like, it's amazing. That's. I mean, yeah, that's one way to do it. I, I really feel like if you're, if you, it's actually not that. <laughs> it rips off bands straight up. But. Well, they've got that one. They've got a basketball shoe he was wearing today, and he was talking about in his rap. I guess they really did rip off fans, like. <laughs> Skechers is so good at ripping everyone off and then just... <laughs> and then well, they, were probably, getting sued they were probably like, yeah. hey, Snoop, what would you like? And he's like, I'd like these. <laughs> okay, you got them. 
<laughs> Amazing. Oh, man. All right. Anyway, um, but yeah. that also made me think of Mr. T, and then that made me think of, uh, I don't know why, why did it make me think of Mr. Oh, because no T in Sketches, right. he's doing it. And then that made me think of Pee Wee Herman and eating his Mr. T cereal in the morning. Oh, man, I don't think anyone's trying to collab with Pee Wee Herman anytime soon, though. He's dead, dude. Wait, is he? He, he died, died yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. No way. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Wow. Nobody is trying to collab. I I, well, I wasn't wrong about that, I guess. <laughs> oh, I think all his sins are wall. forgiven at this point. 70 years old, man. Yeah. Uh, so, Which, yeah, the store was great. Um, and we had an awesome turnout. Again, people came from all over. We had people drive from Asheville, which is like four hours away. Knoxville. Um, I'm trying to remember all the places people came from. You know, I love that we have people that are local that show up for us. But it it does blow my mind that when people will drive, get in their car, and make a trip specifically to come see you in Feathers or to go on a run, with group run with that. And I think that that just talks about, like, how fun you guys make these events and how, like, it just builds that kind of sense of community and, like, being part of something bigger. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it obviously means the world to us, so we appreciate everyone making those drives and freaking booking hotels and staying for the evening. So yeah, it was awesome. It was a great turnout and another just really fun event. And I was thinking like a lot of people like are shy to, they want to do pictures or posts that they're there. I mean, they drove all the way down there for it. Yeah. Like you don't care, right? Just take a picture with us. Yeah, no. And I feel like people are getting way better about that. And they're, we're all just coming up and asking for photos. And so it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's always awkward when people are awkward because I'm like, you're cool, we're cool, we're all cool. Yeah, yeah. Look, you, we you're if listening we see, to us right now, if we see Durs, we want to take a picture with him. Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid to ask. I was afraid to ask that. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, we're cool. But <laughs> then I was like, I was like, hey, Robbie, let me get a picture of you and Durs, and your face just lit up like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you actually get a picture? Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah, I, I did. We did a. You did a real. You did a video. Oh well, yeah, but yeah. Still. I take a screenshot of a video. Uh, I would. <laughs> um, we also, I feel like we hit up every spot in Nashville that I wanted to see. Like there so was different you do? little neighborhoods. So oh, we you did? stayed in Brentwood. Yeah, the oh. night before we went up to Twelfth Ave or Twelfth Street. I forget what it's called, but it's like a. Oh, that's a nice spot. Yeah. yeah. You know Nash? Oh, that's right. You're a musician. I don't yeah. know anything. So I rec- I recorded. We recorded both our albums there. So we were. I've spent three like three weeks there on multiple occasions. Oh wow! Yeah, and then. A bunch of my friends live there, so we don't hang out a lot. Yeah, so fairly familiar. Wow, and you didn't give Megan any tips? I mean, it's uh, is this is what at fifteen years ago. So at this point, a lot of it's changed and yeah. different. You know how just things turn over. So I've only I, have, I think last time I was there was like three years ago. So mm. we had everyone at the um, run giving us recommendations. So we actually planned our whole day based on what people told us in the morning. So what what was up at Twelfth Street? 12th Street we did the night before the run um, with the A6 crew, and it's just a really cute, like, little town with nice restaurants. Um, We went to a place called Urban Grub, I think. Um, It was, like, a – it was very interesting. Our waiter's name was Daryl, and he was really pushing the 49-ounce steak on our (laughs) table, which we did not often for. That's a a lot of ounces. Yeah, it was too many ounces. Too many ounces. When you hear the name Daryl – do you think about anybody <laughs> no. but okay? Step from the Brothers. Oh, oh no, I think the oh. Office. I, I think the Office. Oh, yeah. Step Brothers. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he was he was interesting. And then so after the run, we did um, Broadway during the day, which I thought would be like the calmer time to go to Broadway, which is like the main street. Okay, yeah, you gotta Nashville. give me a little. I don't know the. So it's, Broadway would be like if I think of it as like in my mind what Nashville would be. Yeah, that's Broadway. downtown Nashville. That's okay. Broadway Street, and we pulled up probably around two thirty, I think, and you would have thought it was three a.m. Uh, like yeah, that place is nuts. There's people falling over every corner. There's a bachelorette party. Yeah, it's every it's, corner. It's like 
it's absurd unless you're there for bachelorette party you're almost like why am i even here yeah isn't it where the grand old opry is or whatever that's uh, that's more like outside actually like okay. nashville uh, the, uh, the opry is like more it's like off a of highway it's kind of so weird. would you compare this broadway street to like when we're in austin and there's that one strip that's kind of like nine yeah but Ninth how street. like when we when we leave the that's what y'all like out boy concert day. that's what it's like at 3 p.m Okay, so Robbie's challenging Brandon to a foot race. Yeah. <laughs> no, and there's the people road. stumbling around. Yeah. Okay, I get the picture. Yeah. Because there's just live music going on like everywhere. It, like you, every, like every other but that's, opening is a live band. You went there to go see yeah, music, right? Yeah, did, yeah. And you saw? We, what was her name? Allie, St Allie McBeal? with an S. Um, she did just a bunch of covers that were fun. Oh, nice. Um, what was your favorite song that she did? Uh, Taylor Swift, which, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. uh -huh. It was good. Nice. Um, so, yeah, we spent the day there, and then we were recommended by everyone at the run to go to East Nashville because they're like, it'll be a little bit calmer, not like, you know, crazy bachelorette parties everywhere. So we did that. We found this very cute bar um, that was part of Urban Cowboy, which is a hotel, but it's like behind it, and there's like this bar underneath that just has like fancy cocktails. Nice. I, I thought you said it was a little pretentious. You're thinking about Attaboy. Okay. Okay. So after this, and then we got um, pizza there as well. And then we went to Attaboy because everyone said you have to go to this bar. And I've never been to a bar where it's very small and you had to oh, be on a wait list. Right. But so right next door, Robbie, I feel like you would have loved this. There was multiple arcade bars. Okay. One was called the Up Down. Nice. And... Um, when you bought a drink, they would give you tokens to play. Okay. So we entertained ourselves over there while we waited to get into Attaboy. Gotcha. Um, it, so, but it was like pinball. Uh-huh. So I've been to, so like, Pharmacy Burger is where I've been before, like, a couple spots around there, okay. which is right down the street from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that sounds awesome. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, but tell, tell a about... A barcade is, like, always a good time. I, I like the story about... Um, Attaboy? Yeah. Okay, so they don't have menus. They just ask you what you normally drink, and then they say that they'll make you a drink that you'll like. Okay. And my favorite part was that <laughs> they brought Megan over her drink, and she's like, this tastes like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. That's amazing. Uh, so they had, they made They're like, what do you else. normally like? And she's like, bourbon. Bourbon. And so they made her something. <laughs> she's like, not sweet. I just normally drink it up or on the rocks. And, and they then did something. I don't know like what the they opposite. made her. They yeah. probably smoked something, put a yeah. rose in it. They also didn't have dust. any vodka products because really? apparently the original bar didn't. I don't know. They had some whole fancy story about okay. it. But so it was fun. It was an experience, but it was a little bit, you know, yeah. pretentious, if you will. Oh, yeah. There's another Moss Taco. This is another great place that I love there. Is it? Some yeah, that tacos. was recommended to us, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There were so many places we were there for like 24 hours. So. Yeah. I mean, you did. We you, did a lot. You did a lot. Yeah. The, the thing that drives me crazy about Nashville, though, is that you're always 15 minutes from where you need to be, like uh -huh. 15 to 20 spread minutes. Spread out. Like, it's just, you, you can yeah. never I, like, I, just go from that one That drives place me to nuts. Yeah. Like, like if in a city, I want to be able to, like, Same. walk. Yeah. To, like, like, you can go from in Baltimore, Harbor East, Fells Point. Canton, mm -hmm. like by accident, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, you can just walk from place to place. Yeah. So it's, while you were doing Nashville, yeah, like, uh, Brandon. Yeah, I was gonna say Robbie, but it's not Sorry. Robbie. Uh, Brandon and I went to cover the Sunset Tour from Under Armour, which was I gotta tell you that little space over there that they've built is really kind of neat because it is almost like an island on the Baltimore Peninsula, which used to be Port Covington. It's almost like a little island, and it's right along the water, and the track is super nice. Like I, at first, I was like a little skeptical of the track because it's got really long straightaways and kind of like more dramatic, right? Uh, it like turns, yeah. But it actually looks like it it works out just okay. fine. Okay. Um, I don't know if like if you're in the sixth lane in a race and you got to stay in the sixth lane, yeah. I think that it's not the greatest, but if like once you can start like folding in and and just getting along the inside lanes, it's fine. And the facility is just really nice. It's like clean. It's brand new, obviously. Um, beautiful field that you're on. Nice. And you're right. They look cool. Yeah. yeah. The sun was, it was like, it was perfect. It was like 98 degrees. And then a storm came through and just dropped it by like 20 degrees. That's oh. nice. And so the people had like a real nice break. And 
the way that the it goes the field is kind of like north south mm -hmm. and the sun goes down the west and they have the pavilion there so mm -hmm. it kind of threw some shade down mm -hmm. okay so that was good and uh it was kind of interesting you had they started off with i think a 10 minute mile group yeah and or, they worked their way down in heats right right and it, one thing that we all noticed it, like i anybody who got out there i give them you know applause because you're you, like even the 10 minute guys you're out there in front of like oh, yeah. stands of people right putting your that's uh, intimidating yeah you're yeah. there can see you the whole time there's no hiding in a pack like yeah you know you're doing you're exposed. it exposed yeah yeah you never know if someone's gonna pants you at the start line exactly be like oh man no, they did have worst they, nightmare come true they did have a uh designated like you know how rodeos have clowns yeah. they had a designated pantser <laughs> they should do that <laughs> <laughs> on your marks get set boom yeah um yeah so it was it was fun to watch the competitions um and and it, it just got more exciting every heat and you know these are all amateurs for the most part there's one pro heat and it just kept getting faster and then the weirdest thing robbie you see somebody running your marathon pace around the track and you're like that looks slow like you're like i know right it looks like 730s on a track yeah looks it, like you're like jogging. you're like what are you doing yeah. <laughs> um, and i know it's effort like when you're out there it probably hurts if, if that's not your normal pace yeah but like when i we were like watching i'm like how can i not run a marathon faster yeah. like this looks ridiculous yeah but um and then the, when the pros get out there and they're throwing down that trying to get close to the sub sub four minute mile, mm -hmm. which was their goal. They just missed it. Um, it was like four flat. Yeah, like four zero zero point. Oh wow. Yeah, whatever. Um, uh, John Renick Renwicky, I think his name. I, I Renicky? I'm probably butchering. Yeah. It. Um, he was the winner. And but, but so was there a men's and women's heat or just the well? It was by time. So the last heat before the pro heat. Yeah had uh the fastest women some women from the under armor team oh okay. so there were some pros in there but there was also like just some like i think jess brennan from faster bastards oh, ran that's it. cool yeah it and it was just i mean you got to think it was it was pretty spectacular like in that that particular heat i thought was really good because it was like second to the it was maybe third to the fastest mm -hmm. and you had men women running together and it was close and yeah. You know, people throwing down like uh and then the next one that was the fastest before the pro, like you, you um Yuzuki ba Baba who runs with the Faster Bastards. Uh -huh. And there was another guy that came out to the to our grip party. They crushed and they ba it basically came down to them on the last no like way. 25 yards like doing it, but he was like he was I think he was under under a 5 minute mile. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. very cool and he and he'd run 10 miles that morning <laughs> and he's he's like i think he's close to my age wow so wow, that's amazing yeah and threw Jeez. it down like it just sick and he was he's just wearing uh i think the a6 metaspeed sky nice there you go but sorry under armor <laughs> yeah sorry but there there was and then the next heat the pro heat was that was just sick like yeah. those guys are moving oh yeah, yeah. sweet was there like an after party or anything sort of okay i mean it they said, the whole thing like they said there was so was there Oh. I think it was like the whole thing, like there's food trucks and stuff. Oh, they, there. yeah, there's food trucks and there's a concession stand. Okay. And there was there's beers there. But right before it started, that rain thunderstorm came in. And I kind of felt bad because like Charm City had their truck set up with all their merch. Uh -huh. And it basically just got blown away. <laughs> like, wow. like boxes were like rolling like tumbleweeds. Nice. Um, but yeah, uh, I want to say it was Peabody Brewing. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. You're right. Okay. It good. Was. Peabody um, Heights. Yeah. And I had one of those while we were there and then um you know they had some concessions and it was crazy there was like this the one guy who came to the grit party with his family him and his son and i think even his daughter ran one of the heats okay so it was just neat because cool. like people were running like yeah like their whole family but then you saw pros and stuff it was, it was pretty cool yes. i i love the track that little area over there is i think going to be an interesting spot because you can't get to it so it's going to become its own little island of oh, Baltimore yeah, definitely. over there. Yeah. Um, and you can see the water and stuff. It's awesome. It's nice. Yeah. But yeah, afterwards, uh, Brandon met up with some of the Believe the Run Club, Believe in the Run Club. By the way, in the DMR, mm -hmm. um, a Believe mashup with Tribe uh -huh. ended up winning that. What's a DMR? 
It's oh, the distance medley, medley relay. Yeah, um, yeah. I thought you were talking about like something. I know I did the, the same thing. I felt so dumb when I was there. I was like, wait, they had a di- they had a relay there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so after know. everybody did the mile, <laughs> I love that. The, wait, it, how did that even happen? Because we were we weren't advertising for that or anything. Yeah, they said it was going to happen after the pro field, right? Isn't that when it happened? Uh, yeah, that's when yeah. it happened. I swear it was like I nowhere think, on that. No, it was. You so, put it in there. There was. Are you sure about that? Uh, who knows? Are you sure about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure about that? Um, I'll take fifty fries. Um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, the uh, what you call it though? Um, yeah, believe in the Run Club. Two members from Believe Run Club and two uh, members from Tribe ended up just like dominating. Oh, that's like, sweet! Crushed it. That's cool. And so that was pretty cool. Then uh, yeah. We Ryan Haynes was there. He's taking some photos. Fosto was taking photos, and uh, gotcha. of course, Brandon and I were capturing content. Um. Uh. Okay, that sounds like a, it was a good night then overall. Yeah, I left them kids to play in Locust Point. All right, second check in, and I'm still here with Megan. Believe it or not, she did not leave. Megan, say hi. <laughs> still here. All right. So this time I'll be a little nicer to her, and I'll I'll give her a tip that she can join in on. So Megan. You're really good with consistency. Mm-hmm. So what would be one of your tips to staying consistent? Like, would you lay out your clothes the night before? Would you like, what are some of the things that you would do? Yeah. Always get prepared the day before. What about setting your alarm? Well, yeah. Do you ever hit snooze? Never. Right. You pop up, get going, get your coffee and hit the road. Yep. Time out. Need to get on to some more important things. What's the deal with your arm? Because I was looking at the, the video. For, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm pr- not usually not pretty queasy, but when it looks like a zombie horror film, then yeah, a little. Bit. I told Megan it looks like a zombie got me. It, it does. I'm, I'm not so sure everyone that dog wasn't a zombie. Everyone that's been messaging Thomas hasn't gotten anything, but I went and got um, a tetanus shot and an antibiotics injection, which was terrible. So you're good. And I'm on. So you're not going to turn. No, you don't understand. Cillin. When Megan got the antibiotic shot, <laughs> I okay. First off, I gotta say, I'm looking right at the camera. Megan's the toughest chica you will ever meet. You can hold paces, run hard, be in pain for long periods of time and withstand it. You're tough. You never complain ever. Mm -hmm. She got this shot in her butt. (laughs) She curled up like a baby and I'm driving her in the car and she's like on her face, like in the car. I go straight to Target to get her her you best. Did you just like throw her in the back like a bag of she, potatoes? She was, I limped out of the the place to get into the car. And she's like, like hold, I couldn't get hand. comfortable. Like I was literally like, I don't know how to move, position that, which, my body. Which shot was that? That was the antibiotics injection. Oh, the tennis shot say, was tennis nothing. doesn't really hurt. No. Yeah, they shot it in the top of her rear end. Yeah. And... It like sh- it like went all the way down my leg. She was like limping. I she- was convinced that the guy did something wrong. I was like, he hit something. Oh, and, yeah. Like, also because beforehand he was chatting with the guy and he's like, like, I haven't done this in a while. Is this the right amount? And I was like, <laughs> I'm about to die. Always what you want to hear. His name was Bruce. <laughs> no. Uh, oh. I thought that was his last name. Wasn't it Wallace or something? No. It, like Bruce it, from it, the Evil Dead. It, it Maybe that's right. why. Maybe that's why. Anyway. So she gets it. We're, I'm taking her in the car. She has the seatbelt on because safety first. Um, mostly but because the car will yell. She is three quarters face down, like <laughs> like curled up. The seat is laid down. She's like just sitting there moaning, basically, <laughs> as we get there. I get her medication. Like I thought Megan, I was like, maybe they did mess her up. I was like, this is how it ends. Because yeah. she was like, this hurts more than the dog bite. It did. <laughs> Wait, you didn't get, Do you? are you up on your tetanus? I think so. Oh, gosh. I think I got it when I hit my I, head. You're Every, gonna get a lot of everyone on YouTube. Now. Everyone on YouTube is like re- yeah. very concerned for your health. Well, here, here's the crazy thing. No one on Spotify though. Um, yeah, they want, you, they want you to die. <laughs> the um, when we go to, uh, I was telling Meg, our house. There's no way. Like if a murder happened at our house, there's no way that they'd be able to come in there and not find our blood from first yeah. floor to the fourth floor. Yeah, they think- like. They think they hit the jackpot of CSI. I mean, it's everywhere in the house. Like, yeah. I keep finding droplets everywhere. And then in the car, there's blood in the car. Like, I was like, yeah, we're, you might as well. At this point, I won't even try to clean it up. It looks like you're covering something up. I know. Then Megan comes back from her run on, what day was that? I don't know. Thursday or something? Mm-hmm. She comes back. Her entire shoe is filled with blood. She <laughs> takes off her shoe. What the- 
and she steps on the bathroom floor and it's got blood prints where her <laughs> foot is foot that is. just from life like running life it just sometimes my toes just bleed yeah you do get a lot of that yeah. stuff going on it, it it was ridiculous. No I wonder you're iron deficient. <laughs> you're <laughs> She's your blood, blood. De, blood deficient. <laughs> <laughs> Literally blood tracks in our bathroom. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm bandaging up this meat pie. <laughs> Dude, we really had to put a like a blur on on, on the YouTube version. Yeah. Because if people are are watching that on the big I, screen TV, they're yeah. gonna have to show their kids' eyes. I yeah. got the back here. I got the back of my leg. Um, but. What was great was during a jury duty, it was just aching. So I'm sitting there looking at it, seeing there's like blood coming. Dude, if you would have left that bandage off going to jury duty, you would have been now. I know. I've been like, I, I can't let that. Attacked. That's a distraction that's for the what, prosecution. Yeah, that's what you should have done. So now I can talk about the case. You though. have a crime scene on your arm. You have, Thomas was juror courtroom. number one. I was. I got number to read pick. the verdict and everything. Oh man, that's oh, I'm so jealous. I know. That's I felt so pretty. Weird. I felt like dung dung. <laughs> like it was like I felt. It, oh, like that was a big deal. So uh, this is in, what was the deal with this case? So it was a car accident mm -hmm. where the guy that got hit was in the, like he was making a left turn. Yeah. And the other guy hit him. Now I can't tell if that guy didn't stop at the stop sign first or if this guy turned in front of him. I'm going to guess he didn't, the stop. other guy didn't right. stop. Because how else would it be that bad? Yeah. yeah. But the guy who got hit was a 5'2 guy with a prosthetic leg. Oh, this this sounds mysterious. Who also has a job at Petco, yes. where he manages the reptile department, and he has a contract for vending machines, where that's what he was doing that day, was collecting his money from the vending machines. This honestly sounds like an, another part of my life that I forgot about. All right, <laughs> here's the greatest was, was thing. Was it me? <laughs> he normally, he has a permit to carry, Right, because he carries cash on him a lot. Right, yeah. Didn't bring his gun that day. No way. Gets Suck. in gets in the accident with this guy. The cameras in Baltimore City Circle in 360, which, why not just use an Insta360? It's 300 bucks. Throw that up there. They said they you don't get, do 360? They It circles. Oh, so it goes around and around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're seeing part of the story, but they're like, this is where he choked him. And you see the guy oh, in... Wait, which the, the uh, peg leg Pete was the left? He's the turn. victim. He was the guy He was taking left, left okay. the other guy. And then they tried to do a conspiracy to rob. Because then a group of people surrounded the guy's van. And allegedly, while this guy was choking him, other people stole money out oh, of his... Oh, this is straight up Baltimore. His this pants. definitely happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pull, pulled money out of his pants and his wallet and all that stuff. So he's getting robbed while the other guy's choking him. But Wait, the guy, the driver who hit him is choking him out? Yeah. And he, <laughs> and he's saying, he said, say goodnight, say goodnight, just go. Um, but we can't see Why that. was the driver choking him out? Did they say? He was mad because he... Pulled in front of him. He said, give me $1,000 to pay for the damages. And he's like, give me money. So he was threatening him with that. So he, th this guy says, well, a knife was pulled on him. From the five foot two guy with the prosthetic leg. Oh, but, he's saying the. the so he went back to his car and got a baseball bat. Comes out of his car with a baseball bat to now go back to the five foot two guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like people, like cops. And are you there. can't run away with it. Did he have a run, like the leg? Was Dude, it a blade or was it? No, it's, you, it's like a pole away? leg. Oh, you can't run on that. Yeah. And it, as a matter of fact, Somebody th he started recording with his phone. Somebody grabbed his phone, and threw it on the ground. Oh. So to get it, he had to get on his knees, and like that's when, you know, all this going down. The cops come there. We're There's still everybody standing around, all this stuff. So we had nine charges that we we're supposed supposed to oh, think through. about. Yeah, but we really only had one thing that we could see the in which was assault, but. Uh, Level two or whatever it's called. Uh -huh. um, uh, what do they call like it? Like misdemeanor assault? No, uh, I mean, I don't know what, what it is, but the intent to intimidate or... Okay. Because I, I couldn't see him physically choking him and he's saying yeah, that didn't happen. And the, what, and there weren't, I'm not guessing there were no other witnesses because nobody no, wants... They to. didn't. Here's the thing. The guy that robbed him, you can see him on the video robbing him. Yeah. That guy didn't get in trouble. They didn't catch that guy. And they didn't have any Amazing. of the witnesses or anybody, <laughs> oh anybody to 
to do it. So all we had was the officer's testimony. Uh huh. These this video that spun around. So like you would get like a quick second of like stuff going on. Oh man, this is such a Baltimore thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he had nine counts, and I I believe he was probably guilty of more than we convicted him of. Oh yeah. But you can't go. We, yeah, gotta yeah, we, do we what you could, got. Yeah, and I felt like the police work was really bad. Like oh, for sure, it always is. Yeah, like they were like, did you? Um, did you search the vehicle to see if the, the one guy no had way. a knife? They're like, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and and then. Oh, dude, when I was on that murder trial a couple of years ago, the, the the dude almost got off just because of like the crazy, like the prosecution was terrible. The police stuff was terrible. The only reason it got off is because it caught something on the body camera that proved that it was the guy who did it. Yeah. It was luck, basically. Yeah, that would, we could have used some luck. Um, anyway, so basically. He, he got away with the lowest thing. But I will tell you this, like, I have two legs. Yeah. I'm not 5'2". Yeah. The dude who was assaulted him, uh-huh. he was like six foot three. Oh, man, dude. Giant Gosh. dude. That sounds... And, oh, man. I, and I tell you what, and then getting your car surrounded by people and people reach... Yeah, dude. I would think I'm dying today. This oh, is for it. Sure. It's over. For sure. Yeah. Are you, I'd be terrified. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, t- don't take a left turn in front of someone. And well, where actually, was this? Uh, I, I don't want to say <laughs> exactly okay. where it was, but I'm not driving over there ever. Yeah, <laughs> like, just don't. oh man, that's that just sounds well, wild. What's weird is when we went into jury deliberation, one of the jurors was like, Yeah, that in that neighborhood, if you get in an accident, people are going to come out and surround your car and okay. see what's up. All right, and I was like, Okay, <laughs> that and uh, nice. I was like. Uh, that's something I don't want to experience. But anyway, that was my uh, two days last week. Uh, a lot of fun. I mean, you did your you did your civic duty. Civic duty, and guess what? Yesterday I came home from vacation and found jury duty slip in my mailbox. No. So you well, love you jury like duty, it. though. I do, but I oh, mean, I'll tell you what. Being juror number one, yeah, it's, it's really good. I need to figure out a way to get in on that. Well, uh, I literally am always trying to think of how to get out of it. I mean, if I could do it, uh, if I could do it and I didn't have work to do and I was still getting paid, then I'd be like, give me the longest trial ever. But because I did it when I had when I was at the yeah. Coast Guard, when I was working a government job and I got paid and I was like, this is a vacation. You get $30 a day now. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Three ten dollar bills each day. I made 60 bucks in two days. They doubled it because <laughs> it was 15 like a year ago. Yeah. yeah no, now you get 30. Nice. And I had halal brother halal guys oh, nice. every day. I gotta hit that place for two, up. Well, two days in a row. Still haven't hit that up. First yet. day I was fine. The second day, okay, probably shouldn't have done two days. <laughs> All right, this is Thomas with my special guest Megan for your final check in. Meg, this is it. I know that you didn't want to do these, so this is the last one you got to do. What, I, what gave you that <laughs> idea? <laughs> yeah, I had to pull. I literally pull her. Is it pull the teeth? I don't know. I, you pull something. To get her to do this. <laughs> so, Megan, it's our final check-in. What do you got to tell people about looking forward to fall weather and marathon training? Will these hot runs translate into faster times? Yes, don't get discouraged if your times are a bit slower in this heat and humidity. It always feels worse during the summer, and then you get that crisp, cool day in the fall, and it all comes together. Yeah, like Robbie was talking about today, he felt like Superman. That's what happens. All right. That's our last check-in. Enjoy the rest of the show and the rest of your run. Yeah, so jury duty, starring Pauly Shore. Um, I I did some trail running this past weekend, which was pretty sweet. Did you use road shoes? I used the Brooks Hyperion. Get On out of here. trail? Yeah. See, I'm wearing the Zoom Ultra Fly, and you're doing the yeah. Hyperion. On well, I didn't know that I was going to be doing trail running. I thought I was just I'd be on the road, but then we went to this... Uh, lake and it had a s- I saw there's a seven mile trail around the lake I was like oh that'd be where perfect. is this so this is in southern Maryland uh, on the Potomac we don't have lakes um yeah I guess it's a reservoir technically okay but because uh, Maryland doesn't have any natural lakes it's but it seemed thing, pretty natural it? but there it was called St. Mary's Lake I think and the, well, the day before we went there on that 95 degree day and just we we were looking for a body of water to swim in because the Potomac was. Are jacked. you allowed to swim in that reservoir? I don't know. You did though. Yeah. Oh boy. 
It was a little redneck. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> if you're if you're drinking water, it tastes a little Robbie. Now you know I why. Wow, this you can't go in Lock Raven. Really? No. There wasn't any sign saying you couldn't swim. I'll say that. But it was. There also wasn't any beach. So <laughs> here's what happened. So the Potomac was chock full of jellyfish. Like I'd never seen so many. Yeah, I saw jellyfish. one of your pictures. It was, and I do agree deep. with you. They that is an alien species. That's not. There's nothing atta- attaching that to reality. Jellyfish. No one. Why do they even exist? They, you can't Turtles even, eat them. Do, yeah, I guess they do. But is that just dessert or is that like a mean thing? I think that's a sufficient. I don't. It's jelly. Is, yeah, there's no. Is put there jelly pro- on toast. I guess it's made of protein. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it might just be a treat. I don't know. It's part of their daily is, diet. Is jellyfish make it into any sushi? I'm surprised it hasn't. Yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't made it into a lot of things. Um, just I'm. I know I, that they, I'm honestly surprised that getting stung by jellyfish isn't like a therapy at this point. Well, there is a. I know that there's some jellyfish that goes into some uh, brain stuff, like yeah, like they have like for that. I mean, but talk about a life just floating along. They don't even care. They don't care about anything. They I just, don't think they think. They actually go with the flow. That's that's their. I mon- know they mantra actually swim. Life. You see them swim. But they do, you do think, that. No, no, they just. You, I think yeah, they're they, go. I think it's just making the flow. Yeah, even better. that's their only option. They're it's flowing just, even. Yeah. More with the flow. Oh, okay. Uh, but what anyway, so, deep ones? so there are so many jellyfish that we couldn't go in the Potomac um, to swim or anything. So I was like, we need a body of water on that 95 degree day. So I found, we found this lake and a little, I found on Google Maps a little piece of like dirt peninsula jutting out from it. And I was like, I think we could make that a swimming spot. So we went there and uh, we made it a swimming spot. I don't know that it was. There's a lot of just not stuff there's not like a beach there's like some dirt and some really dirty water and it was it a main sounds like a robbie it was a hole. main <laughs> it was like a fishing spot for a lot of people so there's i was just like pulling up nests of broken fishing lines yeah i was gonna say standing on hooks and stuff yeah so oh, i mean God. i was wearing we were wearing shoes but we had right. and we were in inner tubes and stuff so it actually was kind of nice in a in a way um and then uh, so anyways, there's a trail around there. So I did like seven miles on that trail in uh, Brooks Hyperion, which was surprisingly not that bad. And it was a beautiful trail. It was all shaded. So the next morning. No was, bugs? Um, no, not really any you bugs. You check yourself for ticks? I oh, didn't do that. I need to do that. Yeah. There was a nice breeze. And it was like there's a section with pine needles, Ooh. which is the best. Um, it's like running in pine needles. But it felt like hell. And I think it's probably because I drank a lot the day before. Yeah, that would do it. But I was, I was like, I might have to give up running because of this is. But then you ran today, and you're like, I'm back, baby. Yeah, today I ran in the Brookside Period again. Okay, so real quick, I know we're going to talk about these Puma shoes, Mm -hmm. but I mean, we'll get to those in a sec. The Hyperion, you and I have a differing opinion on. I like it. Yeah, I I kind of love it. Wow. See, and I. I don't like it, and I think that there's two shoes that I would say, if you want a less expensive shoe that I think is a better shoe, the Kimbara, the latest Kimbara. Yeah. If you want, I th- what is that, 14? Yeah. I think that fits that category, mm-hmm. and I the and I'm, I want to say it's more fun to run in because of the shape of the midsole. It has more dynamic, like, curves and, like, feeling underneath the foot, mm-hmm. where I feel like the high appearance is just a slab. And then I ran in the Hoka Cielo today. And that thing. Yeah, I haven't run in that yet. So could, that could be a cool shoe. I know it's the tempo is supposed to be an up tempo shoe and the Cielo's a 5K, 10K shoe. I freaking love it. I like it feels like the Rocket X2, but it doesn't have a oh, plate. Wow. Okay. So I was like, this not only feels like the Rocket X2, it feels like without the plate. I just think it, I might, I don't know. I might, I don't know why you would stop at 10K. I'm interested in it. Yeah. I mean, the, did you get it too? Yeah. Just yesterday. Yeah. All right. The, the books I period, I just, it's, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as before. just maybe a little more stack height, but I just like, it's just simple kind of just the, I don't know the right amount of cushion, but not I get so that. Much. Like it's just, you're also lighter than me. Yeah. So it may feel a little different for a lighter runner. Yeah, it's it feels like that. It's just like a light shoe that feels, you know, when you talk about, we always talk about that, just can run it. And it just feels like 
nice pure running in a way the upper fits well yeah it underneath yeah. the foot it, it feels good and so it's pretty much the same thing as the shoe from four years ago but i guess i don't i guess they didn't really need to change anything because they have the hyperion max which is basically a more cushioned version of that shoe so i don't know i could use a little more shape to the midsole underfoot to give you that like what i liked about the cielo is you get a nice under the fat pad you get a nice squishy thing yeah it look okay. like squishy uh foam and then in the Kimbara, you kind of also get like a different like a different feel through the stride mm -hmm. rather than just like a flat yeah flat piece but let's get we're, let's get a hype beast all right uh yeah we're in the we're doing this puma cla collab thing Meg, what do you think of I it guess it's a collab the oh, look it's... yeah i love it i think it's very cool it is pretty I'm cool. I'm into it. I think they did a really good job marrying the two. I do feel like there's a couple things that seem familiar. <laughs> the um sound mind, sound body, sound familiar. What what's the <laughs> campaign called again? Uh, I think it's called Sound Mind. No, it's it's called something. I posted it the other day. Uh uh this, oh, it is the Sound Mind Collection. Sorry. The Sound Mind Collection, which if I'm ASICs attorneys, I just got like very excited. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but there's a Sound Mind, Sound Body. I, uh, come on. It'd be like me calling it Just Do. But their <laughs> their whole collab is that it highlights the two sides of physical performance. One focused on speed, pace, and personal best, and the other on rest, recovery, and mental health, which is very much... Sound, sound mind, mind, sound body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the stuff's cool, though. They have this, like, so this is a Deviate Nitro 2. Here's what I like about this. What they did is it's still a performance shoe. Is this different? Is they the just, tongue different? Yeah, the tongue is different. This is the old school yeah. uh, style like this. Oh, that's what cool. was the What was the Puma, that the fashion one that I used to wear, like tennis? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I had that one, too. It's like a low-top basketball or tennis shoe. This is that style of tongue where it's the exposed foam mm -hmm. on the edges. And then you also have the retro um, application of the logo on the side where it's like stitched on almost like, I don't think it's real leather. I think it's just like yeah. faux leather, but it gives it that old school Puma look. So it kind of takes the retro, which I'm always talking to brands. I'm like, I love when lifestyle and performance crossover. Yeah. And this is exactly that. So you're like looking at the fast R here. It almost looks like tan suede with a burgundy but swoosh. But like we were just talking before we started recording. Like, what do you do with that? I'd run in it. I mean, this obviously wouldn't be a race day shoe for me, but this one is totally runnable. Like, this is a no, daily the, trainer. The, the, the deviate for sure. The fast star, like, I don't know what you do with that. I mean, I think this one's just a showpiece. Yeah. But you could still, I'd still rock it casual. Yeah, I, could, I think you could. You kind of... Robbie wore Alpha Flies to a concert. He can wear. That's you did? True. Yeah, because yeah. I need to get that extra height to see over get the Get that crowd. extra 10 the inches. Alpha Fly Nature? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it worked. I, th I, think, too. I think you could do the same thing with, the, not, not that this is as high as that, but I think you could wear this around cash. I think you could too, yeah. And I think it looks dope. It, it definitely looks awesome. It's like it has that faux leather, what do you call it? It's like a faux suede. But what is the? My, uh, micro suede. Yeah, it says made from the most premium skin of cows. No, I think kidding. this is a <laughs> vegetable-based one. Anyway, um, I know you can't see it if you're just listening to the podcast, so we'll kind of describe it. The Deviate Nitro kind of has, there's the theme running through this. It kind of has a squiggly line thing, but they're bright red. There's like a white old-school logo on it. You've got the Puma CLA co-branding on the tongue. Other than that, it's pretty much a Deviate. And the Fast R... Fast R looks like something from the 70s that you would, mm -hmm. you know, totally wear to the disco. It's kind of interesting because it doesn't say anything about the upper materials. Can you pull out um, some of the hats and some of the clothing from the box? Yeah. So uh, what what was included, of course, you would uh, guess that since it's a CLA uh, collab, there's several hats styles in here. I, I don't know, Robbie, are you a fan of this style hat with a low? I don't like the super short brim. Yeah, I'm not. I um, that one. This but, one's just a classic go cap style. Oh, you got pants. I got pants. You got yeah. Track oh, the seat. other thing that I thought that was a little bit, you know, is it, is this, you see the sash, Robbie? 
the yeah, yeah. diagonal line. Uh-huh. Oh, Does that remind you of smithy? anybody? Yeah, a little track smithy. There's yeah, jacket. And then I got a jacket. The tracksuit. Brandon, I'm sure I mean, Brandon will put the photos up. Well, no, we already did, bro. No, but I mean in the podcast. Oh yeah, um, the uh, we. But you can see him on Instagram as well. Yeah, a jacket. Look at. Do you see this back? With that? Oh, that's actually pretty cool. What's crazy is that there's a, there's a singlet too, and and a sports bra. Did you get the same singlet as Megan? I get. I mean, the guy's version, I guess. But the singlet is only forty dollars or something. Oh. 45 that's pretty good yeah it's a little heavier though right yeah it's more like almost fashion-y than yeah it's like i don't know it's boxings the drink. the piping is heavier but the actual material itself is i'd say lighter than a tracksmith anyways yeah it's pretty cool and it's available now on sillyathletics.com yeah. probably on puma or something robbie is there something yeah, you didn't get that you'd want mm, i don't think so why right, is that a trick question no, like like I I got the whole tracksuit, and the bucket hat, and stuff which you can see. Oh photos. yeah, no, I have enough tracksuits I think, and it's like one of those things you think you're gonna wear, and then I feel like you never do. I think this color. So my son's going to a school that's colors are red. Uh huh. I can show up to games and embarrass him in a full tracksuit. Definitely do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Thing, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be amazing. I'll I'll get a. I, I need to buy a whistle know. on a chain. If you show up in a full tracksuit like that, they, they might. That might be like automatically you have to be a coach. Yeah. I might, you know what? I might start coaching cross country. Who knows? That'd be cool. Yeah. Get that, get the whole team geared up. Would you really do that? Yeah, I would do it. If do Theo it? was on the team. Yeah. Yeah. If he would, if he wanted to do cross country. If you're a coach at a high school, do you actually have to have a, like some sort of license or can you just be volunteer? I th- Well, you have to be cleared like you have to be around children. Well, yeah. So um, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> Like, but, my dad was our soccer coach. Like, I don't... Oh, yeah. You just do it if you want Ooh, to. They probably just told someone they were, who's going to murder off, them. Off them if yeah. they didn't, so. My jacket is <laughs> rain <laughs> cell. <laughs> like, yeah, you're good. Okay, first off, yeah, the prices on this stuff. Like, this jacket is 120 Try to buy a piece of CLA gear that's under $100 or yeah, under it's, $170. It's actually a pretty good bargain. And this one's, like, it's got rain... Rain, this is rain repellent. I mean, the short is the shorts are 55, which is pretty much right there. Like, that's cheaper, I think, than CLA's actual gear. Yeah. If I, if you like CLA and you want their gear, I would get this stuff. That's what happens when you got access to those large scale factories. Yeah. That's <laughs> it true. It doesn't cost so much. Um, anyways, so yeah. Puma CLA. CLA is all about the collabs. They are. I think it's smart. Why build a shoe? When you can just put your name on it. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah. Um, man, I feel like there's something else that we need to talk about. Great. Train to NYC is starting. Yeah. 96 days away. Oh, yeah. This is basically the start of New York City Marathon training this week. Yeah. Which would be great if I could run more than a mile. Wait, you can't run more than a mile? I ran three miles yesterday, and my f- whatever's a, I'm, I finally broke down. I asked Jeremy Ardenoy for a recommendation for an orthopedist or whatever. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Like, I've taken time off. I took, like, pretty much a week off and then started coming back, started using the lever to get runs in, take it easy, and, uh, like, my oh, foot was killing me yesterday. I ended up running this morning, but it was, like... I did, I'd just been killing it on the bike. Like I spend an hour on the bike and then do a little bit of running. And it's what is the thing again? I have no idea. Like where in your foot? It moves around. Right now it's in the ankle. Oh, I was walking it, back from. It Jer- might be a zombie virus. It yeah. sounds like it. I was walking back from jury duty. By the way, and my foot was feeling better. Yeah, and I stepped in a pothole and twisted my my foot. Nice. That's, That's a full a, on Robbie move right there. Yeah. 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 Literally coming down. I walked all the way home from Jerry D because I'm like, well, I didn't run today. Yeah. I'll walk home a few miles and I'm walking and just, I'm like looking at my phone or something and pothole, bam. Oof. It was one of those bad ones where you, you go down, like I didn't go all the way down. Yeah. But far enough that you pop up and look and it was on Pratt Street. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, definitely. You can never. Yeah, you can never be too careful with potholes in Baltimore. Yeah, they got it. I'm surprised I didn't, I haven't done that. I because I was running, I was running down one of the streets today, like Baltimore Street, and from Patterson Park, and 
or no the other one where the gate is and that one's like pretty gnarly yeah i'm always shocked when i don't oh and then i was running down there and you know where the old projects were yeah Perkins homes? I, that's right where i like that little mini track i don't know how big it is but yeah it's, it's a cool little mini, mini track. track it's like less than 200 meters is that is it really yeah i think it's like yeah, it's tiny. It's great though. It's like a little you can put it in the palm of your hand. We should do. We should do. That's where we should do like a some sort of contest. Yeah, but it's um. So I was running down there and I saw up ahead of me this lady like yelling something. I you know I just thought it was a crazy person and you no, know, she was yelling to her dogs across the street and they were two pit bulls that were not on a leash. Oh jeez. So I was like, mm, like took the nearest alley. Like I'm out of here, dude. Like. Yeah, Seriously? last thing they need to see is someone running. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. So, um, luckily, I dodged that bullet. But, yeah, it was uh, always an interesting time down there. Because the last time I ran down there was when I saw that huge inferno. I was, I've was i been doing that route because I like hitting central. And you oh, cruise yeah. right down. Yeah, that's nice. And, yeah, and you got the mini track. I usually do a loop on the mini track real quick. Yeah. Yeah, we should do a race there or something. That'd be fun. I think it'd be cool if we did like a one hour <laughs> and like see how many laps you can do in an hour. It'd be a lot. That thing is tiny. But anyways, so yeah, anything else we got going? What's coming up this week and how soon are you going to Atlanta? Um, I got another week for that. Not till August 10th we will be in Atlanta. Um, so if you're in that area, definitely come run with us. It'll be a Thursday evening run. Hot Atlanta. Yeah, hot Atlanta for sure. I am going to say something. I think that July is hotter than August. Uh, okay. We'll see. Yeah. Cool. I hope so. I don't so. know if that's true. And but then our yeah. final stop on the tour. will be Boston before Falmouth. Yeah. Falmouth Row Race. That's com- I just realized that's coming up in a couple weeks, and I was like, what? Am- how do I even race? I don't even know. Did you never have prepared for that race and have done fine? Well, I only ran it once. Oh, that's right. You weren't there last year. Yeah. And that I did run fine that day, but I don't know what yeah, I don't even know what my fine is anymore at this point. I think just keep running every day and you're gonna be okay. All yeah. right. Every day? <laughs> you know, with Can we revisit that? Days in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um apparently I'm doing August grit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Doubles. That's how I'm getting ready for the New York City marathon. Mm. Oh, I do need to, yeah, I need to start doing some long, long runs now. I was, I really wanted to do like 10 miles on, on, uh, over the weekend, but. Yeah, what got me was on my ankle was that 12 mile run in the Nike trail shoes on the road, I think. I I think I was already irritated. I think that just threw it off. Uh, Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. All right. We'll see. We'll keep it, keep it up to date. All right. Oh, I just got an email. We're getting the Primex drum too. That's what I. When are we getting that? Next. She said she. I think like this week. She said. Yes. She said last week we were getting it. It says we received the assets this morning. <laughs> that means they oh. made it from Germany. And now she'll send it out. We'll probably get it in the next couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally under embargo till September first. So I, I will care. tell no, you wait, though. I don't care if my ankle's falling off. I told Megan, oh, I yeah, said, as you, soon as I get that thing. You have to run. I, I am running. I don't care. Like, that thing, it is my most anticipated shoe of 2023. I think every, we've talked about it so much, we're pretty sure. If it sucks, like, somehow, I don't know, if it's not, like, the one that was on the floor. Yeah. I will, I will break down and cry. But if it is what I remember it to be, I'm, I'm it's super gonna be, excited. It's going to be good. I might run Chicago just for fun. Wait, is that oh just in that shoe? Yeah. You get a get a bib and then oh you're gonna bandit it in that shoe? Yeah. Say we're gonna get a bib through Nike and then we're gonna yeah. do this shoe. Yeah. Good uh, I'll paint a, a swish on it. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. I think that's everything, right? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Let's roll out. Hey, thanks to Brandon for putting this podcast together and getting it up. So thanks, buddy. And uh, anybody else you want to thank? How about all the people who complete P- Grit? Yeah, thanks for everyone who participated in Grit. Thanks to ASICS, our sponsor, and Junk Headband, Junk Headbands, Running Warehouse, Running Feathers Warehouse. to Nutrition. Yeah, all the our all of our great partners. Oh yeah, Junk Headbands. Did you see what they did? That was really cool. Yeah, they sent a bunch of headbands to the uh, woman. Yeah. 
He asked me for her address. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's a woman and her son who's in a wheelchair, and they do great, like, every time out in Nebraska. And junk headbands just sent them, like, Nebraska Cornhuskers ones, which is pretty rad. Yeah, it is rad. They also sent us headbands for the remaining tour stops. So if you come cool. to the run, there's a chance you'll get one, too. Nice. And, yeah, and a Believe in a Run hat. Yep. So good luck to you. And thanks to Puma and CLA for throwing together this collection and sending it our way to check out. I dig it. I'm yep. into it. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you next week. All right. Bye, Ma. Bye.